is my baby normal? I think that is something that we as mothers ask ourselves often, especially as first time mothers. I know I certainly did. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is normal for a baby based on my experience as a mother of three and also in my experience of supporting mothers through pregnancy and in postpartum, both as a yoga teacher and a breastfeeding supporter. This is going to focus on what is normal for a breastfed baby because that is what I have experience in. I'm going to talk about five behaviors or ideas of what normal is for a breastfed baby. Firstly, your baby needs you. Your baby doesn't just need you for your milk, your baby needs you for you because that is all your baby knows. When your baby is born, it's used to being in you and knows you intimately, knows your smell, the sound of your heartbeat and your voice, knows your taste because it's been tasting your amniotic fluid. It knows your touch. When your baby is born, it's very instinctual for them to want to be with you, near you, held by you in your arms and breastfeeding can satisfy a lot of those needs for your baby because obviously when you're breastfeeding you have to hold your baby, it's got your touch, it's got, you know, you can hear you, it's got your smell, your taste and it can see you as well. It's like the perfect distance to be able to see you from. But even just holding your baby, especially skin to skin and being close to your baby, is just so important for them. You know, when you think about how long they've been in utero and they need just as much time outside like with you it's like the fourth trimester everything that your baby is used to is just you so i know it can be overwhelming to be able to fulfill that need in a baby but it's really important for your baby and it's not always your milk that they want they just want you and that is definitely normal it's normal for a baby to want to be held it's normal for a baby to be upset if they're on their own and sometimes movies and books can tell us otherwise but our instincts you know are very very real and they're if we follow them we'll realize that having your baby in your arms is really really normal and really good for them and for the mother too and that need doesn't stop at nighttime nighttime parenting is also really important they need you around the clock you know physically and emotionally they don't know the difference between night and day when they're born because they've only known night in your room so yeah it's just good to keep that in mind as well that both night and day you're very much needed by your baby and that is a normal normal need that they have secondly babies feed a lot so if you're breastfeeding normally what's recommended is to feed on demand so to not follow a schedule to not be like a three hours or two hours or any of that and to let your baby lead. So as soon as you see any rooting or movement of the head, you know, clenching the fists, you know that your baby might want to feed and it's good just to offer at that point. That's normal, your baby needs to feed a lot because their tummies are really, really tiny when they're born, it's like the size of a marble and that grows quite quickly in the first couple of weeks. Not expecting to be on a schedule and to get back to the, the way things were before you had your baby. You know, expectations can be a bad thing when it comes to motherhood because we just don't know what to expect. And we, often we have to follow our baby's lead. And that can mean feeding a lot. Between eight to 12 feeds in, every, in a 24 hour period, those feeds won't be spread evenly over that time either. You'll have a time where your baby sleeps more, hopefully it's night time, but at the beginning it probably won't be. And they also might have a time where they are more fussy and want to feed kind of more frequently. That's called cluster feeding and that usually will happen in the evening time, but not always. So that is very normal behavior. Your baby needs to feed a lot because their tummies are so tiny that they digest very quickly. Breast milk is the most digestible liquid or food source on earth. And it's, you know, it's made specifically for babies and your milk is made specifically for your baby, just like my baby here is feeding away as he's sleeping. and. That milk is perfect for him right now, at this moment, um, and that's just amazing. Number three, it's good to know what normal breastfed poo is like. A breastfed baby's poo is a mustard color and it's quite loose and it's often seedy. When your baby is firstly born, the meconium, which is the first poo, is kind of like a sticky, greenishy black color. That's normal. That's um, you know usually washed out within the first week 
and there's a transitional poo between the meconium and the regular poo and that is normal too. So basically from the for on day one and two you're going to have the meconium, the sticky, you know, tire like greeny black uh, poo. And from day three to five you're aiming for between three and five, you know, transitional poos that would be the kind of greenish going from the black towards the mustardy, so it'll be kind of greeny color. From five days on, you'll get three to five poos per day. That's, you know, within that range, and they'll start to become that mustardy color. And then from then on, you are aiming to get a couple of dirty nappies per day, but that can really, really depend on the baby. By the time your baby is, you know, five or six weeks, a breastfed baby can actually go up for 10 days, go up to 10 days without pooing. And that is like one extreme of the normal and the other extreme is like having a lot of poos in the one day. As long as they are that mustardy color, um, that's okay. And you'll know your baby, you know, you know if your baby is like, you know, in pain and what needs to do a poo and that is when you will seek help. But there is a range of normal and I suppose for this whole video it's good to know that there is a range of normal, there's many types of normal, but as long as your baby slots in with, within that range then that is fine. But getting to know the colour consistency and the amount of poos you have, your baby has per day is good and that it will also tell you that your baby is putting on weight because we don't have a way of measuring how much is going into your baby when you're breastfeeding but we do have a way of measuring what's coming out and that is through the poos. You become an expert in poo, but it's good to know what is normal. Fourthly, growth spurts are normal. I suppose the first day we should probably talk about is usually around day two or three when your milk starts to come in. You can have a very, very busy day with your baby. It can be quite overwhelming. Because your milk is coming in, your breasts can become very full and engorged and it's very important at that point to feed your baby as much as possible to relieve that engorgement. If your baby isn't feeding as much as you'd like, um, any time at the breast stimulating the milk is good. Even if they're not latched on, any time skin to skin, as much as possible, that's really good for stimulating your milk. Then from then, like you, there is another growth spurt between 10 days and three weeks in and around that time. You'll find your baby is feeding a lot more often and you're just gonna have to slow down and take a day or two maybe off, rest, go to bed, you know, do what you have to do to allow that to happen because your baby will change their rhythms over time and growth spurts are normal. It should be another growth spurt again around six weeks and again around three months. That is also normal and I suppose at that stage is when breastfeeding can become quite easy but sometimes it's a reminder to slow down and to allow your baby to feed a bit more because they are growing and that's always a good sign. And then finally, your baby will also have developmental leaps. Now they're different to the growth leaps or growth spurts and it could be, you know, they're learning to, you know, distinguish different patterns or it could be that they're learning to roll over or to sit up, but there are a lot of different developmental leaps and you can find out about that from the Wonder Weeks. It's a book and an app that you can get and I think that's really good for just learning about all the different changes they're going through developmentally and which is different to their growth and that sometimes they can be a little bit more fussy during those times and it's good to just understand and that that is also normal. They're the things that most stand out to me as normal aspects of baby behavior. I think just for us mums, just one thing I want to talk about briefly is that it is really normal to feel overwhelmed and vulnerable as a mother, especially a first-time mother, but even in your second and third, you're not going to know everything. Um, each baby is very, very different. They might feed differently, sleep differently, have different temperaments and personalities, and it takes time and patience and determination to learn them and to learn breastfeeding together, you know, it's a relationship. It's okay to take your time and to learn it and to be in that vulnerability because that's part of mothering. It's finding the gentler side of ourselves and being in touch with that and the instinctual, more subtle kind of part of ourselves. And I think often in society that's shunned, but it's so important and our babies need it from us. On my final note of all of this, it's also normal to need support and it's really important to seek it. Nowadays is probably one of the hardest generations to mother in because we don't have that sense of community or of aunts and sisters and mothers and you know all around us kind of helping out and 
you're mothering together as a family, as a village, and we don't really have that same support now. So that's what I think adds to the sense of being overwhelmed. And often it can be lonely being a mother in this day and age, and it can be isolating too. So I think that's why it's really important to seek out support and to find your village because there are others out there doing the same as you. You feel like it's too much, that it's good to talk. It's important to talk to others and seek medical advice. If, if your instincts are telling you that something isn't normal, and that's really important to seek that medical advice as well. I am not a medical professional. I am a breastfeeding supporter and a yoga teacher and a mother. So you have something, a burning question that you feel like something isn't normal with your baby or with yourself, it's definitely important to seek medical advice to get answers to whatever questions you have. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe please if you'd like to hear more from me. Cheers, take care, bye bye.